All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another breakdown. And uh, for the past couple episodes, we've been looking at things that have been slightly, what's the word, more conservative, a little bit more in line with what most cinematographers do, not really at the tip of the spear. Today, we're going to be looking at a beautiful ad. Uh, and this really is high level work. I don't know who shot it. Somebody put it in the comments section wanted me to check it out. This is Mercedes Benz and it's in the long run. And it's one of those ads that has very little to do with a car, just beautiful looking images and a nice little story. And then they flash the car here and there and it's branded content. I don't know who did it, but it's very, very well done. And not well done, you know, just from obviously the direction and the art direction and the production design and the whole thing is a great looking ad or great looking film, I should say. But some really, really smart choices from the cinematographer and the director here on how to take advantage of the space that they have. So that is what we are going to be looking at today. You can have a great space, but if you don't take advantage of it, uh, it's worthless and it gets you nothing. But if you do take advantage of it, you can add so much complexity to the shots. And the more complex the shots get, not in the trickery that you use, but in the things that you can throw inside of the frame, uh, the more developed it's going to feel the more rich the images become and the more nuanced it becomes. And people don't even pick up on it, but they feel that in the actual frames. They feel that in the shot and it all it comes together and it feels much more polished. So this is the, the scene or the room setup that we're going to be talking about. They come back to this. It's one of those, you know, five minute long ads, but they come back to it a few different times. So we are going to look at this in depth. You're not going to do the whole thing, but you can check it out. Mercedes Benz in the long run, right? It's basically the story of this girl. She's in this room. She's going to go out there and, you know, say congratulations to her mom or whatever she is when she wins these things. So let's get into it first so we can see the room itself. Uh, and if we go full screen, what does that get us? Yes, please. Okay. So first up, we haven't even gotten in the room uh, and we are in this white wall hallway. White wall hallways, white wall anything in an interior space at night when you're trying to create this mood like this ad is. This is a hard thing to do. Or like, where do you bring the light? How are you going to light this thing? Of course, we're going to have our practicals on. We're going to mix dark on the sides with the practical light coming down this way. But just the framing alone, okay? We've already got things that we are pushing past to obscure. We don't want to just say plonk, here's our lady. Let's make it really easy on the audience. You don't want to do that. You want to create as much depth as you can. So again, using the balustrade, the camera moving uh, left to right, opening up that back room to just, again, not to flatten things off. Uh, and then balancing whatever our prac is here with this overhead light where most of the ambient is coming from. And this is probably, I mean, I don't know. I've never seen this location. Uh, but I would imagine this is like wall busters up here with like a light mat situation going on just to keep it contained from not going everywhere, like over all of these walls, just pointing straight down to create a little bit of mood. So then as we come here, this is a nice little editing trick here. Because there's not a whole lot of option in this room, we go from this wide shot to cutting straight down the line, but we throw a shot in between that has nothing to do with it. So you don't feel the straight down the line like this shot. This is sort of a nothing shot. Still lots of layers and lots of lines and the light coming from the right side. You can tell whoever shot this is uh, very, very good at their job. So, but that shot is in between because now we cut straight down the line to a static shot, right? This is very difficult to get any shape in this thing. You can see the cinematographer trying their best. Like, can we do something? Can we throw something in the foreground? Do we shoot along this line? You know, you don't want her knocking on the door and then stepping back, right? She's got to knock and stay there. Then we're going to use this room over here, add a little bit of room tone just to create depth. It's not going to be a black hole of nothing, just layering every single image. And if you watch this whole thing, you'll notice it's in almost every shot. There are, there are all of these elements, which is what takes a long time to do. And it's hard and you have to plan for it and it's not easy. So this is really where um, the skills are shown off, even in something as simple as that little scene there. Now this, again, look at the frame, right? Lots and lots of stuff inside of the frame, balancing out that room with that little tiny edge light on her. Now, the terrible part of this shot is going to be the in-between because we've got to get over to this window, which we're about to see in a second, but it's going to get really flat and really boring inside of this part of the walk. And let's see what they do to get around that. So we've got a little edge there. That's nice. We've got this mirror, which again, you angle to create depth, right? It looks like it's in the foreground here. Just using it perfectly to create depth. And we're about to, oh, we cut out. We cut from our boringness, right? She goes, enters the room. Yep, free. Cut to close up, little push in. 
and back when she sits down, right? Cut out the walking. <laughs> Nobody wants to see this part. Number one, because it's boring, just a person walking, but also because this is going to be the part of the room that is not very well lit because we're lighting from out the window. And then once we get over here, we're lighting from our practicals, okay? So cut that little part out in a bit, go to close up, and we'll already see where we're going with this. We got a little bit of window, which is going to be important later. And the geography of this room is perfect for the scenes, and perfect for the lighting that they chose, okay? So this little window is going to be key. Its placement, its relationship to the bed is going to be key. That is, this is like the perfect setup for what we want to do. We want the window on the far side of the bed. If our lady is going to sit here and they're going to have this back and forth conversation, we want the window over here because we're going to bring in our moonlight from there or our ambient light. And then we're going to use the practicals on the far side. See how there's no lights on this side of the room? Nothing, because we want that darkened down, right? We want dark to camera. And then we're going to use this prac glow here. We're going to use this to, to again, contrast between the, the back of her and the background. We're going to use that prac and we're going to use this one to then fake our key light because it's harsh here. Yes. But we don't really care about it being harsh here because you can barely see their faces, right? We're far enough away. We're going for the whole mood. But look, L of the room, create depth, not white walls, definitely not white walls. Uh, and then just that little tiny bit of ambient, this blue light. See this little blue light that is up here pushing this way, this, this shoulder, like you'd, you'd probably think, oh, this moonlight is coming from the window, right? Pushing this way. Well, then how does it end up on the back of her shoulder? It's up here, skirted off from everywhere else and just pushing light towards the camera ever so softly. And that's what gets you this nice little tone here. And this is one of those scenes where if you were going to play with the ISO, if you're somebody that rides the ISO, to determine how much light is hitting the sensor. If you want a cleaner image, you're going to really lower the ISO here. So you can, if you want, in the grade, you can dig out these shadows so much more rather than shooting this at, you know, if you shoot at 1600 ISO, it's going to be hard to pull out the levels from the shadow like that. If we switch the pen back. Okay, so this is the, this is the perfect setup of the talent. She can't, you know, we can't have her sitting on this side of the bed and make this work. Because then you would have just a practical on, she would be all dark, because she's sitting over here, looking at the kid, it just, if you if you plan ahead, and you think, okay, I need the two singles as well, how are we going to make this look halfway decent, it only works if they stand there, where they are, and you've got the window behind them, which is selling the moonlight. And then we're using the practicals as our fakes, because as you see, when we come in for the singles, nice little push in here across the bed. Now, 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 We've got our practical dimmed way down and we're wrapping it around, right? We've got, you can feel the quality of light change and you can see the blueness in the pillow over here. We're just wrapping that light around. A little practical is a fake and then we're using something off screen here to help push that same color more on the cheek and then just carrying it around to the other side. But dark, 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 little bit of window here to create the depth and had the color. We've got the practical in the background and really wide eye line, right? And you're going to have a really wide eye line at the bed. You know, it's anamorphic. We've talked about that before, but also on the bed, because if you come around this way and shoot with a narrow eye line down, you're going to be looking into just flat bed, right? At least this way, uh, you know, it does feel a little bit more like uh, you're looking in at the scene rather than you're in the scene. You're looking at the scene, but it makes for much prettier images because you have all of that depth behind her. We come around for the other single. There it is right there. Okay, again, really, really wide eye line. You, can, you can't even see the other eyeball. Now we're shooting into the shadow, a little bit of blue over the top and using that prac as our cell. Now there could be something else. It doesn't look that, they haven't really softened this angle off at all. But if you wanted to make it a little bit softer, you could play that prac there, just dim it down and then light with something slightly larger to the right hand side of the frame. But even here, look at all the background, right? It's never flat, never boring. Pepper things in there as much as you can, but you can only pepper things in there if you plan this shot, if you plan the blocking of the talent relative to the camera, right? That's the only way you can do it. Now that's our night scene, right? Beautiful, nice looking stuff. And we go to our day scene next. Okay, now day scene. Now we're gonna use the window as our daytime light 
We're gonna stay on this side of the line, which is the shadow side. We're gonna hit the other side of the cheek with the light, and we're gonna shoot along the wall. So imagine if she was placed, uh, I don't know, looking back that way or looking the other way across the room, right? It's not gonna work, it's gonna look terrible. Still, even inside this frame, lots of different lines going lots of different directions. Walls going that way, bed is going this way, she's coming across this way, light to here, and that little tiny cheek. I think we move along even more. The outdoor stuff is beautiful as well. Same, right? Little push in. Now, okay, so this is flatter, right? And this is harsher light, way harsher. You're not getting that soft shadow that you were getting before, um, but it allows you to see basically the same lighting in the same room and choosing your angles. Like which angle do you want to choose? If you're shooting a montage ad, do you like that angle and that level of softness? Or do you like this harshness here? You know, slightly wider, slightly harsher. And it's, you can feel it, it's much flatter. Like it's just like plonk and we're flat. And, but that's a daytime look and we're playing, oh, perfect. See the wind that happens when you shoot on the shadow side. So we're shooting into the shadow here, even though it's, I mean, it's pretty filly. All this stuff is coming back in here and making it filly. If you wanted to make it darker and have more contrast behind the camera, you just put as many floppies as you can fit inside this room. As we go, look at the hands and the credit card shot. This is perfect, right? Big foreground element, little tiny leak of light there. Got this like this and light coming over the hands. And then this shot is really easy because now you can use this body to put your four by frame of diffusion right here, right next to the hands. So you get lots and lots of wrap over if you want. And then if you like the softness of the wrap, but you don't like how filly it is, then you can just bring in your neg here and get really, really contained and really tight. But this only works if you set up from the shadow side at the very start. If you come to this shot after you've set up on the, the downstage side, after you've set up with the light coming at the person, it's not going to look nice. You're not going to get any of this depth or anything like that. Again, I mean, if we go to the outside stuff, same. You're doing this everywhere. You're setting up the talent relative to the light every single time in the exact same spot. And it doesn't get old because you're in different environments, right? That's why that's what makes it look different. Here, this is a beautiful get out of jail sort of thing. Let's just have as little of the window. If we're going to blow out the window, have as little of it as possible in the frame, right? You don't want her standing up, walking across this big blown out light. You want her to just sneak underneath and let's have the camera low enough so we can look down at it. And then she gets on the ground, she's doing this thing. I mean, again, the camera, if you can't light from the window you can't see, and the, the window has to be in the shot, just get it just out. So you can use, again, use this little edge. And then if we were to go in for a close up, then you can bounce from down here to help wrap that light around. Just really, really smart use of like right there. I didn't even know the shot was in here. But now we're just using the light to wrap around. I mean, they, they obviously have like a little poly something that's really warm that is being bounced back this way. But if you wanted to keep the shape coming this way, you could, again, just put something on the ground, slightly move this chair back here, point a light into it and wrap it around the face. But it's nice with that little haze from the flare. It's a good looking shot. And as she stands up, yeah, okay. You know, we get a little bit of blown out window, but it's harsh and it looks great. Keep going. I think there's one more in here. Oh, we won't even talk about this scene. Man, this is, again, perfect. Like, you go from the big wide here. Where is it? There's an even wider one. Okay. We're looking, now we're looking straight into the light. And the pen has gotten even smaller. It's scared of the light, the pen. Shooting along this, this cabinet or along this uh, hallway here. Shooting straight into the light, getting these long shadows coming towards camera. But we're setting ourselves up for when we actually want to see her face, right? It's complete darkness now. But we're wide enough, we don't care. As we come in, where is it? There's a little bit there, but I think it gets better here in a sec. I mean, now we can use all of this bounce that is coming off of here. We can use that to help light her up. And in the grade, we're going to try and pull it up even more. But wait, it gets better. Finally, we are here. Now, look at how much fill has come into this hallway, right? Now, because it's out of the frame and we're looking this way into the hallway rather than straight along the hallway into the light, now we can balance everything to this window and bounce the light that was coming in. So that is where, see this edge here is the actual light coming through. And then all of this warmy stuff here is our bounce just here. And when I say bounce, that's, you know, that could be electric poly or just poly. 
right? Just help wrapping it around. And then it really fills in back here as well. And everything feels much more exposed than if we are uh, also like that flare, right? Just moving into that flare versus the wide, which is, where are you wide? Oh, computer froze. Anyway, you get what I'm saying there. Uh, a beautiful looking ad. Uh, check it out for yourself to see all of the outdoor exterior stuff. You can see though, all of the ideas, they happen again and again. It doesn't matter what the scene is, doesn't matter if they're outside, doesn't matter if they're inside. Playing that light in the right spot and then filling to taste is really where you start to separate your eye from everybody else's, right? Your own unique look at what you want the scene to look like comes from separating those values to where you find them pleasing. And this is a great uh, looking ad and a great example of doing that and doing it really well and changing it up from wide to tights. It doesn't matter. Just make it look good, basically. So uh, that's the look this week. If you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to check out the Patreon channel down below. I appreciate the support. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.